Prisoners' rights. As an aspect of human rights, the concept of prisoners' rights has been upheld by a number of international declarations and national constitutions. The underlying assumption that people who are detained or imprisoned do not cease to be human beings, no matter how serious the associated crime, was expressed in the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 10, which states, all persons deprived of their liberty shall be treated with humanity and with respect for the inherent dignity of the human person. This rests on the principle that the deprivation of liberty, that is, imprisonment, is the operative punishment and that it should not be augmented by unnecessarily restrictive conditions. The implications of this principle have been recognized by many countries. In the United States, for example, prisoners may bring legal action under the provisions of the U.S. Constitution, notably the Eighth Amendment's prohibition of cruel and unusual punishments and the Fourteenth Amendment's guarantees of due process and equal protection of the laws. In some cases, courts have ordered state prison administrators to make major improvements in prison conditions and disciplinary procedures or to close down particular institutions. In Europe, prisoners have the right to take cases to the European Court of Human Rights, but they may also utilize national courts. Intergovernmental organizations, such as the United Nations, and non-governmental organizations, such as Amnesty International, have lobbied worldwide in defense of prisoners' rights, such as the right to expect personal safety and security while in prison. Prison authorities are particularly responsible for ensuring the safety of those most likely to be attacked or abused by fellow prisoners, these include former law enforcement officers sentenced for corruption, or similar crimes, and those guilty of sexual offenses against children. In some systems, such offenders have been put in solitary confinement for their own protection. Prison administrators are also responsible for protecting the racial, cultural, and religious rights of prisoners. Alternatives to prison In most criminal justice systems the majority of offenders are dealt with by means other than custody, that is, by fines and other financial penalties, probation, supervision, or orders to make reparation in some practical form to the community. Fines the most common penalty is the fine. For example, in the 1980s in England, about four-fifths of all defendants found guilty of crimes were fined. The imposition of a fine acts as a simple penalty that avoids the disadvantages of many other forms of sentence. It is inexpensive to administer and avoids the associated consequences, such as social stigma and job loss, that may follow imprisonment. However, fines are essentially regressive, meaning that they may be less burdensome for affluent offenders than for less affluent ones. There is the additional possibility that the convicted offender lacks the financial resources, or earns such a small income, that he cannot pay anything more than a minimal fine. In response to this problem, some countries, notably Sweden, have allowed the court to calculate a fine based on a number of days' earnings. Enforcement of fines can be problematic. Some offenders who are fined have to be brought back to court for non-payment. If an offender fails to pay a fine as a result of willful neglect or culpable default, he may be committed to prison, or his property can be seized and sold, while a garnishment order can be used to obtain any funds in a bank account. The length of time for which an offender may be committed to prison for deliberate non-payment of a fine depends on the amount outstanding, though in some cases this involves very short periods such as one to two weeks. If offenders are able to pay the outstanding amount, they can gain immediate release, and if they pay a portion of the fine, the term of imprisonment can be reduced proportionately. Restitution Related to the fine is an order to pay restitution, also known by the term compensation, which has been a popular alternative to punitive sentencing in some countries. Instead of emphasizing punishment of the offender, However, most restitution programs are intended to assist or compensate the victims of crime. Victims of violent crime in some jurisdictions, including Great Britain, Australia, and Canada, are entitled to restitution from public funds, even in cases where the offender is identified and can afford to pay restitution. Generally, this type of program is administered by a Criminal Injuries Compensation Board 
to which the victim must present evidence of the violence and the resulting extent of loss. When restitution is required of the offender, it often amounts to payment for loss of property, repayment of stolen money, or payment for medical costs stemming from injury. Other penalties Several means of penalizing offenders involve neither prison terms nor the payment of money. One alternative, community supervision, may take many different forms but essentially involves the suspension of a sentence subject to the condition that the offender agree to a specified period of supervision by a probation officer and comply with such other requirements set forth by the court. In some countries this supervision is carried out by a probation service. An offender who obeys the supervision order and does not commit any further offence will usually avoid any further penalty. An offender who fails to meet the requirements, however, can be brought back before the court and be punished for the original offence as well as any later ones committed. In many US states this form of probation has been combined with a suspended sentence, which is the sentence that would have been served if the offender had broken the order. In the country of England such sentences are not fixed in advance, and the court has complete discretion in the event of a breach by the offender. English law also allows suspended sentences of imprisonment for a specified period, not more than two years, on condition that the offender commit no further offence during the period of suspension. In contrast to probation, suspended sentences do not require supervision or any other condition. Reparation, which mandates that an offender provide services to the victim or to the community, has gained in popularity in a number of jurisdictions. Many countries have instituted the use of the community service order, also known as a non-custodial penalty. Under such an arrangement the court is empowered to order anyone convicted of an offence that could be punished with imprisonment to perform a specified number of hours of unpaid work for the community usually over a period of 12 months. So that community service orders do not amount to forced labor, an offender must consent to the order before it is issued. It is typically carried out during the leisure time of the offender under the direction of the probation service. The work varies depending on the area, the time of year, and the offender's abilities, in some cases it may involve heavy physical labor but in others it may require duties such as the provision of help to individuals with physical or mental disabilities. Offenders completing the community service order receive no further penalty unless they fail to carry out the work without a reasonable excuse, in which case they can be resentenced for the original offence. This form of judicial disposal has been introduced throughout much of Europe and in a number of countries in sub-Saharan Africa, including Kenya and Malawi. When compared with imprisonment, community service is far less expensive to administer, less damaging to the offender and his family, and more useful to the community. Critics of non-custodial and probational penalties say that the measures are too lenient, while proponents say that imprisonment for minor and non-violent crimes is costly and less effective than supervised terms of community service. The vast majority of offenders complete their community service orders satisfactorily. Other alternatives to prison are based on the idea of preventing offenders from committing future offences. The most familiar approach involves disqualifying an offender from driving a motor vehicle or from holding a driver's licence. This practice is commonly used when dealing with offenders who have committed serious driving offences, such as driving while intoxicated, or repeated but less serious offences, such as speeding. Other forms of disqualification are imposed on offenders convicted of particular types of crimes. For example, a company director convicted of accounting fraud may be barred from directing another company or joining a corporate board, a corrupt politician may be blocked from holding future public office, and parents who abuse their children may be deprived of parental rights. Finally, new technologies, such as Electronic monitoring through ankle bracelets and other surveillance devices have allowed probation and parole officers to restrict the movement of offenders who live in their own homes or in supervised accommodations. Andrew G. Coyle Death Row